Welcome to St. Augustine this evening, the Mike Davis Show. We are very glad to have you here. Today we have to solve a mystery. mystery. You see our new, our normal Tuesday guest who carries the show with his boisterous sense of humor and mm -hmm. just outgoing personality mm -hmm. is down and out. Down and out. Down and out. And down someone, someone poisoned Davey. Someone did. <laughs> so who poisoned Davey? So in the comments today... We need to see, yes. just yes. like in the old game clue, mm -hmm. who you think did, did it, it, how, how they did it, and where and they where. did it. And uh, I'll, I think we have tiles. I'll give somebody that comes <laughs> up with the best answer a tile because right Pete's up. never here to tell me don't give away the tiles. So <laughs> if you want a 904 nail tile from over a year ago, <laughs> we're still giving those away. Why not? I don't know who was in charge of ordering those things, but there's like a 17 cases of them left in here in the office. Boss. Actually, I think there's like four, but we're giving them away. Left. <laughs> we are giving them away, but we yes. need to know who poisoned Davey. Mm -hmm. Some names have been mentioned. Yes. And we will get to those names Suspects. after we get some ad reads. Mm -hmm. And we have a special guest in here with us today Sweet. who is an expert on all things mm -hmm. Taylor Swift. <laughs> yes. Since we couldn't get Davey, we had to get the best, next best thing. Next best. All right. Here we go. Carmelo's Pizzeria. They're locally owned and operated by the Tringali family, as is 123 Burger House right down the street. They're both amazing restaurants. They got great wood-fired pizzas. They serve phenomenal burgers. Uh, they got ice cream. The whole nine yards. They offer dine-in, takeout, and delivery through Bite Squad and Grubhub. The Tringali family and all of their staff would like to thank you for their business. Mm -hmm. They're great places to go eat. Go visit a local place. Go do it in the middle of the week because it's mm -hmm. easy to get to and the food mm -hmm. is still amazing. It is. It's always amazing. And what is also amazing is Powell Heating and Air Conditioning. They have been dedicated to customer service for the entire 39 years that they have been a locally owned business. And that has been evident in everything that they do from the moment they answer your call until the time they leave your home. They are working to make you comfortable and confident about the care and service you receive from Powell. With their fleet of 10 plus trucks, a 15,000 square foot warehouse stocked with parts and equipment, they are ready to serve you around the clock. Their emergency service is always open seven days a week, 24 hours a day, including nights, weekends, and holidays. They service all heating and air conditioning brands, so get your system up and running. It's about to get hot. You want to make sure that that system is running well. The team at South State Bank is a group of bankers that you can count on. Their approach to building long-term relationships with their customers is the best in the business. If you are looking for a banking relationship you can depend on, check out South State Bank. They've got three locations to serve you in St. Augustine, State Road 312, State Road 16, and The Beach. Or you can visit their website at southstatebank.com. They are a member of FDIC. All right, and, and Solar Stick established in 2006. Six. Don't drink anything that's like really bad right before you do that. <laughs> Is a local power, portable power company proudly committed to American manufacturing, constant innovation, and creating jobs right here in St. Augustine, Florida. Solar Six focus on providing solutions for self sufficiency, helps users all over the world complete missions and save lives. Solar Stick, changing lives, saving lives. Reviving American manufacturing right here in the nation's oldest city. Mm -hmm. They're an amazing company. They continue to grow mm -hmm. and Evolve and uh, Brian will be back to tell us about a new product. Ooh, that's right. So we got that as well. Also, the Bozard Ford Community mm -hmm. Update. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, City of St. Augustine, to host a Back Bay flooding workshop. Mm -hmm. It's tomorrow night, Wednesday, April the 24th, from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Willie Gallimore Center. Nice. At 399 Riberia Street. Um, check it out. I'm probably going to go, so I might see you there. However, I do think the good old boy network would have saved us <laughs> with just this simple explanation. If you're low mm -hmm. and it rains and hurricane comes, you're going to flood. <laughs> but some people need scientists to tell them that. So, yeah. But I'm going to go oh, yeah. show up there. Anyway, also the uh, Marsh Creek uh, Women's Association mm -hmm. is hosting Derby Day on Derby May Day. the 4th, which should be amazing. Yes. And our friends at Task Force Hydro One, second annual Grand Luau, the Mark Lance Armory, May 11th, 5 to 8 p.m. Mm -hmm. Amanda and her husband, Louis, will be there. My amazing wife, Darcy, will be there. And I will be drug along in tow. <laughs> it's not drug. I, no, I will be there. I am very much you looking will be forward to there. very much looking forward to being there. And also, the Florida Cabbage 
or Hastings Cabbage, Potato, and Bacon Festival is April the 27th and 28th in Hastings, Florida this weekend. The Boswick Blueberry Festival is also this weekend. You can Mm -hmm. go over there and have culinary delights. All of the delights. Cabbage (laughs) to potatoes to bacon to blueberries. Mm -hmm. All in one time. The whole deal. The whole nine yards. Uh And today is, um, according to Jack Hewitt, it's Passover. Passover? First, Passover's there. All right. Yep, first day. Uh, right. And it's a full moon. It was a beautiful full moon. If you did not see it this morning, you did not get up early enough. It was amazing. It set at about 620. I yeah. know because I was coming over the 312 bridge and I got to see it set and it was gorgeous. When I was heading home last night, I could see it through the trees. Yep. It was beautiful. I think moon rise is at about 8 o'clock tonight, 745, 8 o'clock. Mm. Um, I'll check it in a second, but yes. Um, yes, Andy, you may have to skip work this weekend. What? And no, Andy, I'm not going to become a Swifty. Uh, there's something <laughs> called stubbornness that runs in my family. Mm. It would permit, prevent me from uh, venturing down that way. So That is true. I would be terribly, horribly bad to do that. All right. Yes. Um, there's all kinds of news today. But remember, Davy is sick. So we need to know why Davy is sick. Mm-hmm. We need a suspect. Yes. We need a location. And we drop need, it in the comments. And we need to I mean, just drop it in there. The best comment gets something. So my personal <laughs> one, I heard Troy Blevins' name mentioned. Yes. Do you think Troy? it's possible that Troy is guilty? So Bobby has suspicions that Pete and Troy with the donut concoction on the stoidum uh, is doing a number on Davy's digestional tract. Mm. I have a different theory. Yeah. I think it's Kim Kardashian. Kim Kardashian. <laughs> Kim Kardashian knows what a huge Taylor Swift fan Davy is. Yeah. Apparently, there's a few. She's on a one woman mission to it's take out all Swifties. All the major Swifty fans. She's starting at the top of the group. Davy, um, you're at the top. All right. And that I told him today in a text that voodoo is some bad juju. That so is. be careful. <laughs> Look at what the Kardashians have done to all out Davey. the men in their lives. Davy, be careful. Oh, that's so. That's a scary thought. Yes. <laughs> Davey, I hope you live. <laughs> he better. He better. And I'm not a Swifty fan, Kim, so I'm not a part of this feud. I'm not a Swifty or Kardashian fan. Yeah. All right. Davey, be careful. <laughs> be careful <laughs> with God, you. sir. Yes, with God. Davey, we love you, man. Uh, yeah, so I heard I heard rumors about some kind of donut thing this morning. Mm-hmm. And um, it did not sit well with our friend Davey. Well, I guess I should be grateful. Um, there's lots of food that shows up at the morning show and mm-hmm. at the stoidum and the afternoon show. Mm-hmm. And rarely does the office upstairs get a call. Yeah. I am sometimes like, oh, I'm heartbroken. That would have been really good food. Yeah. However, today, very happy. Thanks. I'm so happy <laughs> that we were not invited to that. So mm-hmm. very, very happy. If we're going to be poisoning people live on air, it's yes. probably best to not get an invite to that part. I completely agree with that. <laughs> I don't want to be guilty of that. So, yes. Davey, uh, best wishes. Yes, rest well. Hydrate. Right. Hydrate. <laughs> hydrate. Hydrate, hydrate, <laughs> That's what he hydrate. told me when I was sick. Hydration station. Hydration. Okay, we have a, a guest. We do have a guest. Who is our guest today? Our guest is our second biggest Swifty fan. Mm-hmm. I don't know about that. I feel like I'm a bigger fan than Davey. I just don't have the don't money to support it. I don't know about I don't that. that. <laughs> I don't know about that. Yeah. So those are fighting words in Davey's house. <laughs> Your daughter. My daughter. Isabel. Yes. Is Isabel. here with us today. Yeah. Isabel is here with us yes. today to discuss all things Taylor Swift. Yep. Oh, yeah. Davey was going to be here today. This mm-hmm. is the show of the year to tell you how sick he is. Mm-hmm. I am talking about Taylor Swift without Davey. <laughs> yes. <sighs> oh, Barbara Jean's going to go all Liam Neeson and Taken on whoever hurt Davey. You go find him, Barbara Jean. But remember, yeah. if it's Pete, you can't hold back. I don't know. Just saying, Barbara Jean. I heard a rumor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying it wasn't me, Barbara Jean. I had nothing to do with it. I didn't even learn about it until four o'clock today. Yeah. It was very sad. Very sad. I was very Rest sad and Davey. heartbroken because then I spent 40 minutes doing show prep that I wasn't going to have to do because Davey was going to be here. And I was just simply going to say Start Taylor the ball Swift rolling. and just <laughs> let him go and, ha- and see all of the amazing stuff. Turns out our Tortured Tuesday is an actual torture session for Davey. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Which spared you of the actual torture session for no, for a little know. bit. I'm all until in. you then had to carry the Taylor I Swift had to carry the Taylor Swift show. <laughs> Davey, you owe me twelve shows, not just one. No. Twelve. <laughs> How many songs are on that album? 
31. You owe me 31 shows, baby. <laughs> That's what you owe me, 31. Mm -hmm. So is it a double album? Is it a triple album? Is it just a large album? It's a double album. So at midnight, she came out with 16 songs, and then at 2 a.m., she surprised us and posted like 15 more songs onto the album. So were you up when the album came out? Okay, I wasn't planning on being up, but then I got back from- You got the stomach flu, and you just <laughs> couldn't sleep. <laughs> I got back from prom at like 11.50, so I was like, might as well stay up till midnight and just listen to the album. So, so she at least released it on a weekend night. Yeah. Okay. Wait, no, 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 no. Thursday, Thursday night. night. Was, Thursday she night. released it on a weeknight? Mm -hmm. Yes. Dear God, does she have no respect for children wanting to sleep? Much less their parents, like me. <laughs> I don't think it's an album intended for children, yeah. personally. Um, uh, I think it's fine. Kathy, Davey <laughs> may or may not have gotten food poisoning, and we are trying to figure out who, who, who was the culprit. Yes. So just like the old game Clue, we just need a suspect, a location, mm -hmm. and the weapon used to deliver the food poisoning, and the winning comment gets a tile. Yeah. Because we're still giving away these things. We're tired of moving yeah. them around the house. So and... Bobby, Bobby's got the best guess so far. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. Bobby, you might get yourself a tile, sir. Be creative in your answers. Mm -hmm. Yep. Be creative. I think it, he's actually, yeah, Bobby's the closest one, maybe. Barbara Jean, my daughter's here, so no stripper stories today. Barbara Jean, I owe you a gazillion. <laughs> not one, not two, not a billion, not a trillion, a gazillion. Yeah. The problem is strippers have been behaving themselves of late and their patrons, and it's hard to find Who stories knows? about them. Who yes. Uh, uh, so, yeah, Kathy, he was okay this morning, but I got a text around noon, and uh, it's been it's been a downward slide since then. And you know he doesn't feel well? Yeah. Because this show was designed, scripted, mm -hmm scheduled for Davey to shine as Ken. Yes. And he just can't be here. Yeah, I agree, Andy. It, uh, Friday was a rough day. There was a lot of Taylor Swift in uh, my house as well. Okay. What? So what? <laughs> I am not a Swifty fan. No. I get that there is all kinds of people that love Swift. And I, I think she's done extremely well for herself in marketing herself. And I'm happy for her in those regards. <laughs> However, I'm not going to listen. <laughs> it doesn't do much for me. But I did mm -hmm. uh, I did kind of look up a few things today. Yes. So I went online. I wanted to know what some of her songs <laughs> you were did the on the album. Mm -hmm. I did. I wanted to know. And apparently she's got lots of songs that might be a little bit uh, oh, risky. Oh, saucy. Yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, how do you feel about that? Is this a turn for her? Because I thought she was strictly bubblegum music. No. Well, it's not a turn for her. I don't feel like um, with Folklore, which was like um, three albums ago, there was definitely more, I don't know, inappropriate mature material. Yeah, there's content. a lot more cussing and stuff than most of her other albums. But, you know, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Sure. She releases sure, clean it's versions. Okay. It's okay. <laughs> so Isabella primarily listens to the clean versions, at least over the speakers at our house. Yeah. She swears she listens to the clean versions in her headphones. I'll literally show you the playlist. <laughs> None of them are explicit, except for one Miley Sour song. So of it's not Taylor Swift. So she has a song called Florida. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Uh. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, the hesitation <laughs> says it all. <laughs> Uh, yeah. In the whole, like, is it the worst song on there as far as mm. language? Or is there worse songs? Mm. See, I'm getting ready there's to get a, you to confess that there's more bad there's songs. A, there's a worse song. Okay. Yeah. Kathy, I thought photo. most of the songs were dark. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's, okay. It's a darker turn for her. Yeah. Well, it is an album about her six year relationship ending. Okay. So that's why it is darker music. But I thought she had Travis. And a Super Bowl trophy and all was happy again in Taylor Swift land. Well, she was writing this before she started dating Travis. It All the production notes are long, like so if you it was really so You wait until she writes an album about Travis Kelsey. <laughs> 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 we'll see what she happens. might actually have a song about a bar and beer and bourbon. I might actually listen to that one. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yes, there. I guess the chorus of Florida is uh, one hell of a drug. Uh, Florida, I could mm -hmm. use you up. Mm -hmm. And there's even the F word in there. Yeah, it's not her only song with the F word. I know. Um, 
Yep. Yeah. There's actually <laughs> speaking of Travis Kelsey earlier. There's <laughs> actually a song about two songs about him. I think in the album. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. There's the alchemy where she says she touches down and that they're on a winning streak, which is like the Chiefs and the football football mm-hmm. season. And then there's so high school. That's a football reference. Yeah. Mike. If you didn't know, <laughs> <laughs> are we talking about soccer? Is this English Premier League? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and then there's So High School, which is just about being in love. Yeah. So my daughter sent uh, my wife, Darcy, Wesley sent her from Australia the entire breakdown of the album <laughs> because she is a huge Taylor Swift fan. Mm-hmm. I just got the cliff notes because I did not <laughs> need the entire, um, you know, when Wesley texts, it's like ding, 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 ding. It's like all of these in a row. And I'm like, that's Wesley. What is it? Oh, it's Taylor Swift's album came out last night. Blah blah blah. And she's giving. <laughs> so apparently, uh, one of the songs has to do with a feud. Oh yeah. Between Taylor and Kim Kardashian. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that one's "Thank You, Amy," mm-hmm. and it has capital letters in it that um, spell out Kim in it. So <laughs> yeah. She's so subtle. No one will ever so figure subtle. this out. <laughs> that's a yeah. frequent. That's a frequent way that she sends her fans messages is that she writes everything in lowercase except for specific letters and then you pull out the uppercase letters and those will spell another message Mm -hmm. yeah yes turns out she's a bit of a manipulative person Taylor? Yeah. Is that what you think? So Um, it feels very calculated to me in that she orchestrates these really intense parasocial relationships, which encourage people to feel closer to her than they might actually be in reality and motivate them to spend more money on her products. So you think it's all marketing? Yes. Okay. Okay. Whether she's doing it intentionally as a marketing genius or whether it was a cute thing and it just worked out that way, you can make that decision for yourself. But um, yes, I think she is, it's a master class in using parasocial relationships to enrich yourself. And that is something that Taylor Swift could be studied for. So you would rather see Harvard study her for that than for the lyrics in her song? I think Harvard already studies the lyrics in her song. I, I think I'm there is. Sure there is. There's I think there a is. A, there's a Harvard Taylor class. Yeah, there's a Harvard Taylor, Taylor Swift class. Yes, I'm yeah. pretty sure. Yeah. Yeah. So. Kim who? <laughs> <laughs> you guys are killing me today. Kim doesn't wear purple, Barbara Jane. No, I'll tell you that. Kim is not going to wear purple. Tone. <laughs> Very. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, favorite song on the album? I've given you a lot uh, of grief about the album. I'll probably give guys, you more grief. I but... actually have like five songs that are my favorite. Shocker. Um. So well, you had 31 to pick from. <laughs> yeah. So my um, favorite song, like my first, like number one is probably the smallest man who ever lived. I really like is that, that her song. Ex-boyfriend. Yeah. Okay. One of them. See, mm-hmm. I don't even know the album and I can figure one that out. <laughs> yeah. Who is the ex-boyfriend? Um, Joe Alwyn. He's a British actor. Now mm-hmm. he's the smallest man alive. <laughs> smallest man that ever lived. Ever lived yeah. in the history Not of men. Not even alive currently. Tiny that Tim is a giant lived. compared yeah. to him. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so that's do, you, do you hate this British actor because um, they broke up? Not necessarily. I just kind of, I don't know. I just don't like how he like took six years of her life, you know? And, like, she even admitted, though, like, some of the wounds were self-inflicted. In an Instagram post, she posted, "The I have a lot of wounds from this that are healing. And then she was like, but they're self-inflicted, too. Like, I didn't have to stay that whole time. I just, that's six years, and that's a lot, especially for women. So, like, I don't know. I just didn't like that. you guys die so much younger than men. No. Not true. No, it's just that she wants. You do so much more dangerous (laughs) jobs than men. Not true. No, it's just because Taylor Swift wants kids, and you know, women can only have kids for a certain amount of time. So, Taylor Swift wants kids. How mm-hmm. old is Miss Taylor Swift? She's thirty-four. Tim Cosgrove, expand your boundaries today, buddy. This is a, a generational <laughs> thing. You're going to be just fine. Yeah. Tell you what, Tim, you can have a drink every time we mention Taylor Swift. <laughs> Good luck staying awake for the whole show. <laughs> yeah. Right. So uh, she's how. 30? She's 34, and they started dating when that she was 
27, I oh think. Oh, my God. He took the best years of her life and did not <laughs> give her a child. <laughs> the shame of it. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's kind of a really a misogynistic way to look at a relationship. I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm in it's okay. it for the kid. I'm just saying. <laughs> Yeah. It doesn't do a whole lot for female empowerment if you're upset over the fact that you had a six-year relationship that did not produce children. Yeah. Am I missing something, feminist well, Amanda? <laughs> that's totally how my friends describe me. Um, I mean, there's something to be said for time wasted in a relationship. And, I mean, I think that from what I hear from my daughter, she has admitted that she sort of gaslit herself into staying um, but I'm sure he probably also like when the time is right, we'll do this, that, and the other and whatever. Mm -hmm. And that's honestly, that's one of the reasons why the research has shown that moving in with someone before you get married is a bad idea. Because if you're not, if you're not moving in with the intention to get married, then you have a tendency to get stuck in an unhealthy relationship for longer than you should have allowed yourself to be stuck. Mm-hmm. And it seems like that's kind of what she did. I agree with your mom right now. That's what I did. She's she said, <laughs> she said yes. yeah. Don't say anything. <laughs> so, I mean, it's, I think it's an interesting cautionary tale for young girls to say, like, see that, you know, maybe having similar values and actually expecting follow through on those values is an important thing to not waste time. You could take that angle on part of the story of this album. Okay. So, how long will she spend with Travis Kelsey? Who knows? Hopefully Travis forever. Is. They're getting married and having kids. <laughs> They're going to get married. Okay, guys. I promise. <laughs> Travis is like on record. Bet. <laughs> Travis is on record as saying that he needs a girl that, or the next girl he wanted to go with would be a girl that's ready to get married and have babies that he's in that mindset. And if that's one of the reasons why Taylor Swift's last major relationship broke up, then maybe that's the mindset she's in. Maybe right time, right place. Who knows? I want people to be happy and I want them to have a happy life. So I hope that if they are right for each other, that they settle uh, down and have happiness. I want them to be happy too. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. I think a four letter word will stop them. Fame. It's dangerous. It's just a dangerous, mm -hmm. ugly thing. Mm -hmm. It's not mm -hmm. good for you. I keep saying that when yeah. that uh, the famous fairy comes along and sprinkles the dust on you mm -hmm. and makes you famous, mm -hmm. it's not a good fairy. It's a bad no, fairy. She's, no, it's not. It's a very bad thing. Ask Elvis. Fairy. Ask them all. Ask yeah. Prince. Barbara Jean can tell you. Famous dust. Yeah. It just it messes. There's a with reason them. why there's uh, the Twenty Seven Club. Yep. So, it's it's a danger. Carly Simon's song for years. Do you remember oh, the who, song? Yeah, You're So Vain. You're So Vain, that's right. You probably think the song is about you. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're so True. vain. You probably think the song is about you. Mm -hmm. I was guilty. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I, I was, was like four. <laughs> all the things you could say about Travis Kelsey, you could at the very least say mm -hmm. that he's a very brave man. Because he is walking into a relationship with a woman that will blast his business uh, to the largest audience of females <laughs> yeah. that he's ever conceived of in his life. Yes. So, I mean, that's a brave man to walk walk into that situation, eyes open and arms wide. So Kathy makes a great point. She settles down and gets married. She may lose her content because most of her songs are about broken relationships. Right? Okay, guys. A lot of them guys. are, but she does have... Okay, so... <laughs> Guys, when expert, her and Joe no expert away. <laughs> Just expertness this out. Yeah, okay, uh. so when her and Joe Owen were dating in the beginning, she had an album called Lover, and that's when they were happy, but there's still breakup songs on that album because she was taking it from movies. She wrote a song about movie, like a movie relationship. And she wrote a song about her friends' breakups. So I think she can still write like sad music and then she can also write happy music, like she did on that album. Yeah. <laughs> so she'll still have a wealth of of content. Yeah. I mean, who knows? There might be a boyfriend well, we don't I, know about Luke yet. Luke Combs a great breakup song. Beer never broke my heart. It's awesome. <laughs> It was such an amazing song. Touched so many men. His liver, maybe. Beer but not never broke my heart. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Tim. Taylor Swift, I believe, is her name. Yes. Taylor Swift. T A Y L O R. Just text him. Just check in that you're safe at the end of the show. Yes. No, I, I, I really do think uh, she is mm -hmm. a marketing juggernaut. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how many people downloaded it, but she probably became an even bigger bazillionaire at the end of the night. Oh, for sure. Um, so I think from that standpoint, I, she's great. I accept it. The music doesn't speak to me. Mm -hmm. uh, breakup songs with dudes is not something I want to hear about. So. <laughs> I mean, if you were in a relationship it's just with a dude, not something I want my to hear guess about. is you would want to break it's up. It's <laughs> just not what I want to hear about. I mean, I no. get that there's a market out there for that. Mm -hmm. It's just not my market. <laughs> yeah. So. I mean, I I listen with a, an open mind and an open heart to be supportive of my daughter, but mm -hmm. I do get the I do have some moments where I'm like, really, this is what we're saying about really. Well, I gotta tell you, we I would let the kids um, pick whatever station they wanted mm -hmm. to listen to in the car. Mm -hmm. We had uh, XM radio, so there's a whole host of genres that you could listen to, and almost yep. all the kids when they were going to high school were into rap music. I'm not a big rap music fan. Mm. I just I'm, it's not the genre that I like listening to. You're there's not a lot big into gangster rap. There's a lot of people that do. So I would always tell them they could listen to it until something inappropriate came on <laughs> in the song. At which time I would turn the station to what I wanted to listen in. to. Yeah. So most of the time it was about 30 seconds or a minute. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they'd be smart and turn it down yeah. and then turn <laughs> it back up. Or, but they had to really mm -hmm. kind of pay attention. So one day to prove my point, I turned from a very inappropriate song to one of the 80s stations on Sirius And XM. turns out it was not appropriate either. <laughs> it was ACDC Highway to Hell. <laughs> and I got thinking to myself, I said, you know, I'm giving these kids a really hard time about their music, but I'm sure the Sisters of St. Joseph's were not happy mm -hmm. when all the kids were playing Highway to Hell as they were leaving the parking lot yeah. on a Friday afternoon. As they're leaving catechism <laughs> class. <laughs> as we're leaving the end of the year mass mm -hmm. and cranking out ACDC Highway to Hell. So yeah. hey, just, you know, every genre has, every, every generation has that music that's a little bit on the edge because that's where you're at. Well, there's a whole set of reels right now where it's people my age who are uh, actually listening to the words mm -hmm. of the songs that we all sang uh, loud and proud as children and realizing <laughs> what those songs are actually talking about. Yes. Um, so th those are kind of funny reels if you want to go down a, a click hole. Darcy was in therapy for a long time about Afternoon Delight. Yeah. 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 As a kid, she's she's like, yeah. There's all these songs that have come It's just like, an ice cream party in the afternoon, just right? It's an ice cream party in the afternoon. It's just that's hanging it. out. Yes, that's all it was. So <laughs> I, there's just a lot of, there's a lot of songs out there that I, they made it on the radio mm -hmm. and you're like, how? I gotta How did say, that make it? I kind of appreciate the era where people had to be incredibly creative with the double entendres. Uh, it's a little, it's a little more fun to listen to those songs than it is to listen to some of the songs that are out now. Yeah, like I like I like the Top Forty Station, but there's like this one Nicki Minaj song, and. It's not very appropriate. And so whenever it comes on, that would be all Nicki Minaj. Yeah, that's all Nicki Minaj songs. <laughs> but there's a lot of times that I have to turn it down when you're in the car, mom. Yeah, yeah you're not allowed mm -hmm. to say any of the names of her songs on this show. Yes. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's just, probably true. Yeah. I'm not for censorship, but I don't want to be censored because <laughs> yes. you're giving out those names. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I also don't want to become a meme like Ben Shapiro in reading um, oh, the that is so funny lyrics. I don't, that is so I don't funny. desire to become a meme. <laughs> You've seen that, right? No, I haven't, nor do I wish to watch. So Ben Shapiro is going on a tirade about um, mm -hmm. the song WAP. And so in order to illuminate his audience, he reads through the lyrics. And that became like a soundbite that's gone viral and has been memed. People put it to music mm -hmm. so that it's actually like mm -hmm. him rapping the mm -hmm. song because he does say all of all of the words except for, you know, the ones that he spells out or says like P word. Um, so it's, it's pretty funny. If you haven't seen any of those, those are funny videos also. Yes. yes. Well, that's kind of what you're trying to prove a point, but you just mm -hmm. become a caricature of caricature, yourself, yes. a caricature of mm -hmm. yourself. Yeah. And Ben did that. And then Ben made what? It was billboard number one, I think on the rap charts with Tom McDonald. I did not know that. Yeah. So that have happened you heard in their the last song? It's so good. <laughs> it's so funny. So Tom McDonald is a um, anti-establishment rapper. He 
produces, he writes all of his own stuff. He produces all of his own stuff. His girlfriend produces his videos and he frequently goes viral. He's an anti-woke rapper. And so as a joke, I guess he reached out to Ben Shapiro and Ben Shapiro was okay with it. And so they um, they collaborated on a rap song that Kind of like viral. the rapper a few years ago that teamed up with Billy Ray Cyrus. He released a rap song that was supposed to be country. They said, you can't do it mm-hmm. really basically because you're black and you're a rapper. And then Billy Ray Cyrus reached out and they remixed it and released. I think it went to number one. Were you talking oh, about Lil Nas X? Yes, probably. <laughs> I don't know. This the thing. Old Town Road? Yes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah that's yes. Lil Nas X. Thank you very Little much. Lil Nas X is God, it's so good rather... to work with experts. <laughs> Is rather controversial for lots and lots of reasons. I am sure that they all are. Mm-hmm. And when I say all, I mean all of these artists, right? They well, all he's the one that went in. viral with the, the blood Nikes, mm, okay. among other things. Okay. So, other things. <laughs> other things. Well, yes. I can't. Uh, uh, okay. Barbara Jean is throwing all kinds of lyrics out there. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Keep throwing the lyrics. Keep giving them. Okay. Yeah. Uh, anything else on Taylor Swift? Um, is the album going to be her greatest album ever, or is that the next album she releases? Where would you rank it in oh her? Goodness, guys, that's like a lot of albums. Oh. <laughs> it's like picking your favorite child. Uh, Too many in my, in my mind, but go ahead. Uh, probably <laughs> my favorite right now. Probably because there's just like relatable lyrics in it. and oh, It's new. It's also new. <laughs> yeah, it's also new. Yes. Yeah. The novelty. Before this album, what was your favorite album? Mm. Um... I don't know. Probably like um, Evermore, which is one of her COVID albums, or Mm. Midnight Song, which is her 2022 album. But do you also believe her debut album doesn't get enough praise? Yeah, it does not. The debut one's so good, but a lot of people are like, it's country. It's not what she is now, but I think it's great. And it should have a place in the Aeros store. It doesn't. The first album is not in the air. Store. It's not. Mm. It's so sad. Highlight do you, it. Do you want to know why? I know why. Because one day she will release it. <laughs> it'll be on the 50th it's anniversary okay. when she needs another 50 who, gazillion who will dollars. will release it? No, it'll be Taylor's version. Uh, who? Be- I, I'm trying not to say the name because t- I'm Taylor afraid. Taylor Swift's name? I'm afraid Tim <laughs> is going to get too many small sips of something into <laughs> It'd be like the day we played trivia and Troy said he would take a drink for every time his son, his son missed, missed and a question. Blake tanked every question. It was the greatest. It was the greatest Great. one yet. It was awesome. <laughs> Troy did fantastic. Uh, Turns out he's better yeah. at trivia sloshed. Uh, I, Bobby, that is a phenomenal Weird Al Yankovic parody that should have happened. Oh, Weird Al Yankovic oh, with WAP. Gosh. That would have been perfect. He was so good. He was so much fun to watch what he would do with the song. He's such a smart dude. Have you ever mm-hmm. just heard him in an interview just talk like just you, you? He's so he's funny. He's smart. He's I think he's hilarious. You have to be a lyrical genius. Mm-hmm. To be able to do what he does to take a song mm-hmm. and then be able to spin that into a completely different tune with the yeah. same music. I mean, that I can't even sing a regular song and or much <laughs> less make one up. And he can do all of that. I mean, I just think it's I think he's very talented. But also to be able to reach out to these artists and get them to agree to him doing parodies. Uh, not all of them agree. So the Coolio one, he got approval, but Coolio like didn't know what he was approving. And so um, I think Coolio's people more approved that one. And Weird Al found out later that Coolio wasn't too pleased with it. But um, the die was cast at that point. The, the funny thing is, uh, RIP, how do you trust your people? Yeah. To approve something from a guy that's maybe he just came as Al Yankovic, but if he came as Weird Al, the contract said Weird Al wants to use mm-hmm. it, right? Or re- Weird Al calls. Who knows what his hey, preparations? Hey, should called. we look into this guy whose first name is Weird, or did that like make him cooler? And they're like, oh, he's weird. This guy will be fun. Do you think Coolio wasn't rocking out uh, to Weird Al records? No, come on. No, no way. Come on. No way he was listening to yeah. Fat. He just wasn't. There's so many hilarious songs. There's great songs by him. Uh-huh. Have you heard the Star Wars parody one? I was a very picky eater, and so my parents would sing Just Eat It a lot to mm-hmm. me because mm-hmm. they were frustrated and they wanted me to eat my vegetables. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he had so many good parodies. Fantastic. They were good. Yes. He was I have introduced my kids to them, and they've rolled their eyes, but mm-hmm. he's a lyrical <laughs> genius, and I don't care. Yes. <laughs> yep. 
All right. Uh, yeah. Any other uh, Taylor Swift news that you would like to discuss before we begin to move on to adult topics? Excuse when I say me? adult, I mean just stuff that people care about over the age of... I'm just kidding. <laughs> over the um, age of 18. Not no. counting Davey. <laughs> I don't think there's any more Taylor Swift news. No more news. No. Do you, I, if you had a prediction on her and Travis Kelsey getting married, when do you think it will happen? Um, I have no idea. She wants an engagement this year. Let's be real. <laughs> she wants an engagement this yeah. year. I'm going to give you the prediction. This is the right. Davy Hartzell prediction. Uh, they will get engaged on opening day of the NFL football season. No way. The wedding will be uh, after they win another Super Bowl, and she has performed at halftime of the Super Bowl, <laughs> thereby taking up an entire NFL season with the planning of the wedding culminating in them having the wedding on the field after them. Zero Personally, chance. I would not want to get married on a football field, but that's just me. You also um, would not smell Travis Kelsey's towel, which was a weird moment. So nasty. <laughs> Did she smell his towel? There's a moment after one of the wins and they're hugging on the field and he was, you know, drying himself off with a sweat towel and someone caught video of her holding the towel to her nose and taking a deep <laughs> whiff of his pheromones. No. That was, must be love. Must be love. <laughs> it must be love. If you've ever smelled someone after a really hard football game, that must be love. <laughs> it must be love. Yeah, it must be love. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, we can go lots of places. Lots of places. We have an Arizona rancher uh, okay. who was charged with murder um, for shooting um, people trespassing on his property. Okay. That trial came to a conclusion this week. Okay. Uh, we have Alec Baldwin news, oh. which is always kind of good. We have Rachel Maddow as a courthouse reporter. <laughs> I know, I know. How good could that be? I'm going Alec Baldwin. You're going Alec Baldwin. Alec Baldwin. So I... I know on the video, you guys can, can look it up and watch mm -hmm. it because we don't share a lot of this stuff. And Amanda does a great job of finding stuff mm -hmm. on the fly. Yep. But Alec Baldwin was in like a, a coffee shop in New York. Mm -hmm. so, many funny, so many funny and both inappropriate things in the video. So he's in there by himself. He has no entourage with him. Mm -hmm. And apparently some nuisance reporter who is a viral person who posts was harassing him. Mm -hmm. And wanting him to say uh, anti-Semitic things. And then when he wouldn't, started harassing him about being uh, involved in the shooting on the set of Rust. Uh, it got really ugly. And I, I, I am not an Alec Baldwin fan. I am not. Right? I'm not. I, I, I did see him speak at my college. I don't. I, I just don't enjoy some of the things that have followed around about him. Some mm -hmm. of the things he have said. And I have no idea what happened on the Rust set. And I typically, we refrain from, from commenting on things until cases are over, right? So, but watching him get just harassed by this person, mm -hmm. it's like, that. this is just wrong. So then I guess the barista that was in there working comes over to kind of intercede between the two of them after a couple of minutes of this. Yeah, He's wearing a mask. And I'm like, dude, it's so not that year anymore. You, can, you don't need to do that, okay. right? If Baldwin tries to get the agitator to leave the shop so he can get his car. Is it a woman that's yelling at him? It is a woman that's yelling at him. He eventually slaps the phone out of her hand. Now, I have to tell you, he he put up with this for a good minute, two minutes or something. I have no that's idea. That's a bold move by her. If you know anything about Alec yes. Baldwin, he has a history of going after people that annoy him in public. So, And, and you know she wanted that to happen. She saw the ride and she, bought a ticket she, anyway. wanted, she was trying to incite that. He was trying to. And so I just think it's, it's just a, a statement on kind of where we are in a country today when you you decide that's how I'm going to harass people. Yeah. That's how I want to be. I just think that's I, I don't love that about our yeah. society right now. And I also don't love this outfit. What in the world is she wearing? Uh, something provocative. I'm it's, sure. It's like boxer shorts and a bra with something written on it. I'm sure. I don't. That's. Uh, is she being escorted out? Uh, he appears to be pulling her out. He who? Uh, <laughs> Alec Baldwin. Oh. Well, there's a good lawsuit. He doesn't have any of those going on in his life right now. Baldwin appeared to have snatched Crackhead Barney's. This is the name of the person. That's I'm sure him. that's who crackhead it is. Crackhead Barney's phone out of her hands before the irate Emmy winner left. 
Okay. So this is, I'm assuming, some internet famous person. Somebody that we don't know anything about. Yeah. Crackhead Barney. Isabel is not saying anything about this person, so we assume that Taylor Swift has never written a song about her. <laughs> she <laughs> might now. <laughs> I mean, I like Baldwin's lost some weight. Kathy, I, I probably yes, would yes, as well. and yes on all of your comments. Anger, ego, and narcissism. Yes. Yeah. This is yeah. This is a look, guys. You want me to show people this, sir? Nah. Is a, it's, you can look it up. Look it up for yourself. Crackhead Barney versus Alec Baldwin. Alec Baldwin, yeah. In a scuffle. I'm trying to figure out what I don't want to stare at this woman's chest like this, but I'm trying to figure out what a bra says. It doesn't make you a bad person. <laughs> I'm trying to figure it out. Makes you a reporter. <laughs> Doesn't the people make you want a to bad know. Uh, yeah. So when I saw him speak at my college, he was talking about. I guess someone asked him from the audience if the, if he had any projects coming up. And he went on this like, well, when you get to be a certain age, you know, I have all kinds of ideas and I bring them to producers, and they're all like, that's a great idea that will cast some twenty year old in. And so he was fighting very hard to be in front of the camera on, mm. was it 40 Rock or 50 Rock, whatever that show was that he was in with Tina Fey? I, I think it was 40 Rock. So that was what but he was. I don't quote me on that because I never watched a single episode or yeah. ad of that forever. He was, so I watched like the first episode mm -hmm. or the first couple of weeks of it and was like, yeah, this ain't for me. But that was what was in development and he was, very annoyed 30 that 30 rock. 30 rock maybe 30 rock. um that he was very annoyed that all the producers wanted him behind the camera and they wanted to cast some young buck in in the place of the character that he was trying rock, to rock? cast for himself i don't know kathy's saying 40 rock I, yeah, I i'm gonna trust kathy because i never watched somewhere it. in the tens family yeah i did not and it's the address of their i guess studio in rockefeller center i don't know Something like that. We need Davey. We need our NYC Where's guy. Where's Davey when you need him? Right? Um, so, yeah, I mean, he seemed very arrogant in that conversation. He had a lot to say about nuclear power in that discussion as well. Oh, which, the stuff that's the cleanest power on the planet. That yeah, stuff? Okay. Which he, which he actively fights against. And yeah. so, um, Thanks, Alec. That's yes. why we can't have and nice until things. until his pithy answer That's a was, Taylor Swift lyric. <laughs> <laughs> Call it out. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> My day just went to hell on a hand. His basket. statement was that until he can be promised uh, that nuclear power has zero accidents, he will not support nuclear power. And I'm mm. like, what can you promise in this entire world? I tell you what, I'll support happen? Westerns until you can prove that there's no accidents on set. Right? Too soon? I mean, maybe that means he's not allowed to produce anything yeah, anymore. Yeah, it's too soon. Maybe I should you know. Have. Yeah. Kathy says 30 Rock. 30 Rock. Thank you, she Kathy. Looked it up. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, so I didn't get I didn't get a great vibe from him when he came to speak. You, he you, was you very read, pompous. You read the room correctly. It's very pompous, very arrogant. He uh, had, very thought very highly of himself. Yep. He loved it when people asked questions about him running for office soon. Mm -hmm. Um. Kenny's got Troy Poison Davy. Kenny, you need to give us a location and a weapon with used to what? poison Davy. Yep. Yeah. What did he poison Davy with and where? Yes. So we yeah. all know that if Pete had been poisoned, it would have been on the carousel. By we a all, couple of realtors. We all know the location and who would have done it to Husband Pete. and wife realtors. No. What would they have used to poison him? I don't know. I don't know. A Celsius, did a you, tainted Celsius. Did you see the video I sent you guys of the potential billboard today? No, you did. It. No one reads email anymore. I was no. You sent it to email. I see an old lady email. That's the only email I have from you. There's two pictures in there. Yes. So uh, scroll down on the email. Yeah. I, read the rest of the joke. I couldn't get to the whole joke. I was uh, in a meeting. Okay. I was so I just saw the old ladies, and then I scrolled down and saw a lot of tatas, and decided that's probably not something we're showing today on no, the show. No, we're not showing that. <laughs> Davy overdosed on sugar. Entirely possible. Tried to see what was on Crackhead Barney, Amanda, and now I'm beyond legally. <laughs> I told you, I'm not trying to look. But Bobby, don't look at the sun. It's uh, there's a lot to see. There's definitely a lot to see. Yes. And I can't. I know the word "you" is on Lefty. Yes. <laughs> That's all I know. 
I can't figure out. I'm guessing what's on righty, but I can't confirm if that's what's on righty. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Rachel Maddow? Rachel Maddow. Rachel Maddow. Someone who doesn't have the problem of having enough material to write messages that people can't read on her bra. So, <laughs> again, you have to take this into context. This is the woman that held up. I think up. you just damaged Mike making him think of Rachel Maddow's chest. I never knew she wore one. Um... <laughs> <laughs> uh, she held up the paper and said, I have Trump's tax returns. Uh-huh, she right? didn't. Which she had less in her hand than we found in uh, Geraldo Rivera's uh, Al Capone vault. Right? I there thought we were nothing. about to make another bra joke. <laughs> no, no, I was not about to make another one. One yeah. was quite sufficient. Um, so... Mm -hmm. Uh, so not a reliable source. Not not in my mind a reliable mm -hmm. source and not somebody in my mind that is a smart source on some of the things. If you have a tax return that shows that someone paid taxes, yes. you're saying he cheated, although he paid that. It just doesn't, it, it's not, you would think you would have looked at it and you would have had somebody who was a tax expert look at it before you went on the news and yeah. try to convince people you had something that you didn't have. Of which somebody released it illegally yeah. to you. Which if you release someone's diary illegally that might have been related to the president, you you'll serve jail time. Rated, yeah. I think I think this IRS person did get some jail time for this, which was kind of shocking. But well, if I was the IRS and watching that show and be like, she thinks those are tax returns, we're definitely auditing her. Kathy's got a bad avocado for Davey. Bad avocado? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a bad thing. You don't want a bad avocado. I'm allergic to avocados. Mm -hmm. Avocados are good. Not for me. Oh, they're good. <laughs> right, so uh, Rachel Maddow somehow found her way Monday into the courtroom where Donald Trump is on trial. Accidentally? I, I, I got it. No, she wanted to be there. And I have to know why you would want to be there. A courtroom, I, I had to serve on a jury. It's not fun to go through those proceedings. They're long, they're tedious. There's no yes. there's no law and order moments. It's not in Matlock. It's not <laughs> Matlock, right? There's none of that stuff, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. uh, so anyway, she was there. The, these are her um, purely subjective observations. Of course. Okay, this She's is the her, most subjective uh, one no, no, I've ever really seen. Are, um, these really are. The courtroom is bare bones and inelegant. Again, it's not law and order. It's Aren't not you a Mason. taxpayer in New York? You're the one funding that. It has unflattering lighting. Think the DMV office with a high ceiling. I mean, really, you have been there offices? all day, and this is the, the first thing you want to tell me is what the lighting was like. Point one and two. This setting is crap. Yeah. The courtroom doesn't smell good. Think old soup and stale breath. Fortunately for me, I haven't had old super stale breath in a while, so I don't know really what those are like. But maybe you have some things you need to get off your chest. This is... That was a joke. <laughs> there was the jokes. That's the joke. Um, there it was. Tim, Taylor Swift. Uh, <laughs> yes. Um, uh, this, I think we would have gotten better observations from Taylor Swift. Uh, we would have gotten better observations from just about anybody. Mm -hmm. uh, the overall atmosphere uh, I would describe as tense. You have a courtroom where they are trying to convict the president of the United States on a crime that he didn't commit. Yes, that courtroom is tense. Have you ever been in a courtroom that isn't tense outside no. of like adoption finalizations? Yeah. Like every courtroom is tense. The police officers in the who are police in the courtroom are working very hard and they appear to be very stressed. Oh my word. The judge in the case is soft spoken and has a pleasant voice. Seriously? Isn't that judge female? Uh, the prosecutor speaks just like Seth Myers when Seth is not telling jokes. Maybe I'm showing some favoritism here, right? The judge is soft spoken. <laughs> The prosecutor speaks like Seth Myers. Trump looks a lot older than he used to be. I uh, mean, seriously, could we, the last three, can we just throw Rachel Maddow? Can we just throw some, some biasness in there, right? Can we literally just throw that in and go, okay, here we go? Come on, Rachel. I, I mean, that's the best you oh, can my come word. up with. Um, it seems to me, again, my purely subjective she tape live that tweeting Trump this? seemed miserable to be there, which is why you bloody well went to the trial. You wanted to yeah. see him miserable. You wanted to see him close to jail, which the thing that's as a reporter that you should be shocked about is that somebody's rights may be 
being violated here. They, that somebody may be railroaded into jail. When the left quit worrying about people going to jail for the wrong reason, mm -hmm. shocks the heck out of me. I don't know when it was, but I remember as a kid, the left was always trying to find a reason for you they're not to go to, to jail. Get somebody out of now, jail. they're always trying to put somebody in jail. Oh, how well, the wheels depends. have turned. That depends. You're it right. depends on what protest they're attending. <laughs> Correct. And <laughs> what art form they're engaged in. Yes. And if it includes, uh, what kind of cheese was Parmesan that? Parmesan cheese. Thank you, that kind Parmesan of cheese. Parmesan cheese yep. and drywall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're going to stress these. Mm -hmm. She goes through a lot of stuff in here. Um, she's she's great. Chris is Sarah Pailbox. Good God. Maybe Trump would be in a better mood if he had called uh, Chris Lucero Bill. If Chris Lucero had been called, that's one hell of a bond, buddy. How, how long you, before yes. we get Chris Lucero sponsoring this show? Yes, Chris Come Lucero on. should 100% be sponsored. Yeah. We'll talk about the Trump trial and the fact that he should have had a good bail bondsman the entire exactly. time. Exactly, Chris Lucero Bill uh, Bonds. I know. It, it just, <laughs> the fact that she is the one somehow giving this, that people mm -hmm. would listen to her or watch her, amazes the heck out of me. Where where did she give these? MSNBC. I'll go anywhere to get news that we can talk about. That is all right. I went to a dark place. Darker That's than Taylor dark. Swift's latest album. <laughs> Tim's going to be so schnockered by the end and of this. Tim, you are not making it to work tomorrow, buddy. <laughs> There's a um, there's a rocket launch, but I don't know if Tim's gonna make it. No, Tim's not gonna make it. <laughs> Tim is a hundred percent. In yeah. other news, Michael Rappaport. Do you know who Michael Rappaport is? Isn't he that comedian guy that really really hated Trump? He really 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 hated Trump. Really he, super duper hated Trump. He has Trump. a confession out now that voting for Trump is on the table. Yeah, I've heard that. And. Uh, the Hodge twins, uh, who mm -hmm. are great, they had a guest on. They were kind of giving him a little Keith bit of and Kevin. A, little, a little bit of crap over it. Did they interview him? Uh, no, they had another. Uh, they it's had the, like, the New Jersey gym owner was on. Okay. So, a guy that's up in that general area, six mm -hmm. seventeen rocket launch. I will be catching that on the way home, looking south, not paying attention to any traffic. Get out of my I'm gonna, way! I'm going to be doing my producery stuff after, so I'll probably miss it. Yeah. But uh, take a picture of it. So uh, he is, they gave him a little bit of grief. They're also like, man, we have to figure out a way to give some of these people grace that come back to reality. Yeah. We still got to give them a hard time. So they're trying to figure out where the, the, Where's the balance? How, how much hard time can you give somebody while at the same time being grateful yeah. that they finally have seen the light. And, I, yeah. and the guy they were interviewing was the guy that owned the gym that New Jersey kept trying to shut yeah. him down. And he just said, I'm going to be open, mm -hmm. right? I'm going to be open. I'm going to continue yeah. to be open. Which I think they got, and then he actually kind of they asked him uh, what happened to you after that. He said, well, "I ran for office," which I didn't realize how bad it was on both sides. It's horrible. It's terrible. It's nasty. I don't want to do anything. Yeah. He said, the, "So that was an eye-opening experience for me." Yeah. He said, "I walked into that and it was just bad." So did he get elected? No, he did not. Yeah. He did not. No, because you can be a folk hero. Yeah. But that doesn't mean the political establishment wants you embedded with them. Yeah. You're not one of their kind. How long before Taylor Swift tries to run for office, Tim? <laughs> she would win. <laughs> she would win. What's her she name? Would, yeah, that's a <laughs> Say her name. Taylor Swift okay, would win. Okay, there you go. Tim, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Tim, you have to text us approximately how many drinks you had during this yeah. show. I know you tuned in and you thought, this is not going to be fun for me, but you found a way... To make this show fun Torture for you. Torture Tuesday, Taylor Tor Swift drinking that's game. That's <laughs> right. All right, uh, we will, we, we've got the mm -hmm. morning shows back on, maybe with or without Davey. We hope that he's feeling hope better he's tomorrow. Feeling better. Uh, Davey owes us 31 shows. So, so we <laughs> show. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently we didn't say it enough times. Taylor Swift would be so disappointed uh, in you. I know. Uh, but we'll have that in the morning. Uh, mm -hmm. There'll be an afternoon show, hopefully, if Davey's back. Yes. Uh, we do hope Davey feels a whole lot better. We do. Because he's a happy guy, and being unhappy is a happy guy is an unhappy thing for a happy guy. Mm -hmm. Unhappy for an unhappy person is just normal. Hey, what, what did you just do, Boomer? For some reason, what did you just this do, has happened Boomer? like three times where if my computer goes to sleep, then it unmutes itself once it's asleep. <laughs> it's the weirdest thing. For the thing. record, my phone was on silent the entire show. No, it was not. Yes. He went into the live stream when we were getting live and his sound was on and I had to tell him to turn his sound off. But that's when we were going, not, not on the show. 
I can't help it if my computer unmutes itself uh, and it goes to sleep. I know. What am I supposed to do? It's asleep. You know whose phone's been silent the whole time? The one that doesn't connect to phone service? I've gotten a bunch so of texts, is that, but no one So you say no that thing just the, automatically starts talking on it? Now? It unmuted when it went. There's a way to fix that. You go into the settings and you turn it to a male laptop. <laughs> then it doesn't say anything ever. <laughs> That's crazy. Clearly, <laughs> that is not Rachel Maddow's problem. That is not it. Okay, I think we've insulted just about everybody today. Maybe. My work here is almost done. You know who we didn't insult <laughs> enough? You guys have an amazing <laughs> night, and we will be back tomorrow. Enjoy your drinks, Taylor Swift. Yep. Bye. <laughs>